A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, heard a voice from heaven speak to me. Then the voice spoke to me and said, Go to the scroll that lies open in the hand of the angel who is standing on the sea and on the land. So I went up to the angel and told him to give me the small scroll. He said to me, Take and swallow it. It will turn your stomach sour, but in your mouth it will taste as sweet as honey. I took the small scroll from the angel's hand and swallowed it. In my mouth it was like sweet honey, but when I had eaten it, my stomach turned sour. Then someone said to me, you must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. Verbum Domini. How sweet to my taste is your promise. In the way of your decrees I rejoice as much as in all riches. Yes, your decrees are my delight, they are my counselors. The law of your mouth is to me more precious than thousands of gold and silver pieces. How sweet to my palate are your promises, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Your decrees are my inheritance forever, the joy of my heart they are. I gasp with open mouth in my yearning for your commands. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. <clears throat> my sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Dominos Rabiscum Laxio Sancte Evangelii Segundum Lucum. Jesus entered the temple area and proceeded to drive out those who were selling things, saying to them, It is written, My house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And every day he was teaching in the temple area. The chief priests, the scribes, the leaders of the people, meanwhile, were seeking to put him to death. But they could find no way to accomplish their purpose because all the people were hanging on his words. Verbum Domini. Well, my brothers and sisters in Christ, so we're celebrating Mass. So today in the United States is the memorial, and it's an optional memorial of St. Rose Philippine Duchesne. Uh, born in Grenoble, France, Rose Philippine Duchesne. Uh, entered the Society of the Sacred Heart in 1804. After hearing a sermon by a missionary priest, she pleaded to go to the native peoples of the New World. In 1817, Rose left France for St. Charles, Missouri, the remotest village in the United States. She was 49. She spent the next 20 years establishing schools for girls. At the age of 72, she went at last to the Potawatomi tribe. A year later, she declared, I feel the same longing for the Rocky Mountain missions and any, and any others like them that I experienced in France when I first begged to come to America. Rose died in 1852. So a missionary within the United States and a, and a modern day saint, right? Uh, the 1900s, uh, the 1800s, the 19th century. So St. Rose intercede for our country, right? Intercede for the United States. But at the same time, every opportunity that I have, we do pray for the church, right? The church is far more important than the United States, all right? Church over nation, right? God over nation, God before all else, right? And of course, the church is God's authority on earth. And so it is apropos that we pray uh, on this uh, feast day, the dedication of the Basilicas of uh, St. Uh, Peter and St. Paul, uh, two of the four great Basilicas in Rome, uh, along with St. John Lateran and St. Mary Major. St. John Lateran, we just uh, recently uh, celebrated the dedication of St. John Lateran and then Mary Major, of course, is uh, on August 5th, 
a day that I will always remember because uh, it was the day that my son took his own life. But today we pray for the church. And of course the gospel is so apropos for that. All right, uh, uh, my house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. My brothers and sisters in Christ, how do we view the church? And not just the universal church, but the particular church. How do we view Catholic churches in general? When we go into a church, how do we act? I think all of us are falling into it. Surely not the same now as it was when I was a child. I remember, first of all, that we never passed a Catholic church. When I was a kid, never passed a Catholic church without going in and making a short visitation. Without going in and saying a prayer and uh, uh, paying homage to the Blessed Sacrament. We never passed a Catholic church without blessing ourselves. Now, I still do that. But indeed, in terms of uh, 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 paying homage to these visitations to the church, I don't do that. And I find myself, and I noticed this uh, just recently, I was in a church. I find myself, and, and again, it's, it's familiarity breeds contempt. I find myself carrying on conversations in church before Mass. Uh, uh, it, it's just we don't have the same respect as we do. It's kind of like the churches now are no different than marketplaces, right? And that's what Jesus hated. That is the lesson of today. So maybe, my brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, uh, we can resolve today to have more respect, not just for the universal church, uh, but for particular churches. And uh, churches, uh, when I say that even... Once we are inside these temples of God, these, these uh, churches that, that house the true presence, the real presence, the physical presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when we pass, we should give honor. We should go in and pay homage. And indeed, while we're in there, we should always be respectful uh, and not treat it as if we would treat uh, our own homes. Uh, in many respects, maybe we uh, uh, act better in our own homes than we do in the church. So I think that this is a great reflection for us today, my brothers and sisters in Christ, again, uh, because reverence to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is a humility, it is an obedience, uh, it is an honoring of God, and we should do it most especially in our churches where he's truly present.